hey guys what's up and welcome back to the channel before we get into the video i just want to take a quick moment to thank my members their names will be on screen now i really appreciate you for supporting my channel in whichever way you can whether that is by joining the membership or by just being a viewer silent or otherwise but if you do want to become a member then you can go down to the description box and you can follow the link there to join the membership the benefits of the memberships are from the first tier the shout out supporter you will get your name on screen the second tier you will have the added benefit of a bi-weekly members only live stream and for the third tier you will have an additional benefit of uh, members only videos that i upload on the weeks where i'm not live streaming again the details are down below for joining if you want to join we have a great community we have a lot of fun and yeah thanks again so much for supporting me it really does mean the world but let's get into the video starting 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 good morning and welcome back to the channel my name is Ilona I'm also known as Shikara Transformations I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder but hold on it tops like this it has to be the chest huh? the good old chest flex there we go. Do you know what? I literally have not trained my chest in months. I mean, I've done a couple of bench press sessions, but that's it. I have not trained chest in months and it's still looking fucking massive. So just shows that your muscle just doesn't disappear very quickly. If it's been matured, this is matured muscle. I worked for many years on my chest. Anyway, besides the point. So. Today we are going to look at glitters and lasers. I have actually been requested to do this video by maybe like two people, which is for me highly requested. <laughs> so if you ever do want me to react to people, then feel free to message me. I can't promise that I'm going to do it. Sometimes I forget and sometimes I look at the channels or the people and I just feel like it's not quite, it's not quite, um, basically I don't want to react to it. <laughs> but usually speaking as I forget, that I'm quite a forgetful person. I have a lot of things going on. But uh, before we get into that, I film my bodybuilding journey. I vlog all of that, so if you're curious to see what that's like, how much I eat, how I train, the ups and downs, the supplements that I'm using, check that out. I am actually starting to do like supplement reviews, kind of. So yesterday I got another order from my core supplements. I'm affiliated with them, so there is a discount code that you can use for 10% discount. I don't think I get anything back on it. I think it's just a discount code for you guys. Um, but basically, uh, I'm going to start like reviewing different pre-workouts, different aminos, different whey proteins and just give you feedback on what I think tastes nice and what works and what doesn't. So today I'm going to try the bomb, Chemical Warfare, as a pre-workout and uh, I'll feedback on that in the next time I'm vlogging. I think I'll vlog tomorrow um, and I'll insert clips of the supplement haul. Additionally, if you want to be in with the Phoenix Rising then it will start uh i will start sending out the welcome packs from monday so if you want to be part if you want to be part of that then email me on the email down below for more information and finally if you want to see how i did this makeup look this very cute halo eye then you have to become a member so i filmed a members get ready with me tinder tinder story update it's been a while since there's been tinder stories but there's tinder stories again guys i'm back on tinder i have been for a few weeks so i have some stories to share so if you're curious to hear about all of that then be sure to become a member the details again are in the description down below uh, i do every other week i do a video for the highest tier and then the weeks where there's no video, I do a live stream from the second tier upwards. So, yeah. Let's get into it. So from what I understand, she went on a holiday and walked on the beach and she found it very difficult. Basically, that's the gist of it. From what I've been told, I actually don't know. I do know that she was supposed to be losing weight, right? Didn't she fall out with the whole haste situation? I think I did a reaction to that video, actually. Because her and that Anna girl, they had like a falling out because of the fact that she was... And I thought she was a sellout, but I'm fairly sure she's looking bigger than ever. Unless, like, it's just I haven't checked in for a while, but she looks... She doesn't look like she's lost weight. Let's, let's put it like that. Hey, everybody. My name's Anna, a.k.a. Glitter and Lasers, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are talking about my trip to Hawaii, and I'm just... I'm confusing her with Fat Girl Flo. Is her name Anna as well? I don't actually know. Reflecting on 
kind of what I learned and what I came away from on this trip because it really was, as I've mentioned in a couple of these videos, totally and completely transformative. And I'm still processing all the things I learned. I think, first of all, I need to kind of explain why it was so transformative. This was the first time in filming where I combined a lot of the work that I do typically, so like outfits, swim, all of that, with some pretty rigorous physical activity. Now, if you wanna get a rundown of some of the physical activity we did, we made a great video about hiking that you can check out here that kind of shows the trails we did, how hard they were, and kind of how I got through them. What I realized kind of on this trip, and this is why I'm making it its own. All right, so I know that for a bigger person, she is quite fit. She does like dancing and all of that. And like whilst doing like a few minutes, like creating like a TikTok or something like that for a couple of minutes, or even like doing a dance stint here for a few minutes here and there, is great and it's exercise. The reality is that going on a hike in potentially quite treacher in a treacherous environment, um, like I don't know what the trails look like. Regardless, you're going to be on your feet for a prolonged period of time. And the, 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 despite. It doesn't matter how fit and healthy you are, when you are like her, like what weight, like 400 pounds, something like that, over 400 pounds, just being on your feet and having all of that weight bearing down on your joints whilst moving, it has to be incredibly painful. So to go hiking to a destination for a photo shoot, it sounds... I don't know, it sounds kind of dangerous and kind of dumb, to be honest, because if she injures herself and say like she sprains an ankle, how is she going to be able to move around? That's not me being horrible, but the reality is like, I couldn't carry her. I'm pretty fucking strong. Somebody like myself who is into strength training cannot physically carry her or lift her. How, like, what are they going to do? Like fly out an air ambulance? They would have to, right? Because... There is no way for her to move otherwise, unless they have like a wheelchair with them or something like that. Own separate video because I think it's really, really important that I acknowledge this happened. Um, but I basically had a reality check in Hawaii. Um, I like to think of myself as fairly active. I like to think of myself as strong, especially since now I've been working out pretty much, actually, not pretty much, actually, every single day. Um, since January 1st, you know, I thought I was, I don't know, in perfect shape. Not perfect shape, but I... Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? Does she have, like, a bit of, like, an ambulance situation where she has, like, reverse body dysmorphia, where, they, where she thinks she's smaller than what she really is? I can't... I find it really difficult to... Uh, understand how somebody can be so big and think that they're in like good health and good shape she has to be like i just don't believe that she's not in physical pain a lot you have to be because of just the sheer just sheer gravity weighing down on everything within the body and they were very hard hikes for me they were very uh not so hard hikes for my videographer john my creative director and yeah, a lot of, I would assume that a lot of people she went on a trip with were, just had less mass. It has to be difficult to just shift that, this amount of mass around. So, but in a way I suppose it's good that she's got a reality check. Maybe it will encourage her to be a bit more active in weight loss. I don't know if that's even a goal of hers because I know she was a bit haze and like body positive. But maybe just having a reality check will do so. But didn't she have like a reality check with her? The reason why she fell out with this other woman is because she had some health problems. And that was a reality check as well. So I'm not sure what's changed since then. They were moderately hard hikes for my friend Emily, who is much smaller than me. But for me, these were some freaking hard hikes. Like... There is a point, um, I don't think it was captured on camera because I literally screamed, turn off the freaking cameras. I didn't say freaking, I said something else because I was so ashamed where um, I was walking in some pretty wet sand and my feet were kind of slipping into the sand, maybe about a half a foot, maybe even a foot in some cases. 
Yeah, that's quite dangerous, hey? It's quite easy to lose your balance in the sand. I mean, I walk my dogs pretty much every day on the beach, <coughs> depending if the weather permits it. But I always walk my dogs along the beach because I can let uh, I can let them off the lead there because I can see and they don't really run away. I mean, they still do sometimes, but for the most part, there's nowhere uh, that I can see whether there's other people, whether there's other dogs. They can just run around and just be little maniacs on the beach. They love it. But walking on the beach is hard. Uh, even for somebody like myself, who is really fit and healthy, I, I recently installed a pedometer again because I was just curious how much I'm walking. I walk around 17 to 18,000 steps a day. I'm an incredibly active person, and this is on top of my training. I find it hard to walk on the beach. Running in the sand is even harder. Like, not that I run, I'm not a jogger or a runner at all. I'm built for, I'm built for power, I'm not built for endurance. That's not my bag. But, yeah, I can imagine that somebody that her size, that it is very difficult to walk on the sand and that they do probably sink deeper. And if you, sometimes you get the bits where the sand is a bit wet, it turns into almost like a bit quicksandy. Yeah, you have to be careful. Like I've fallen over before where that's happened and you can you can definitely really injure yourself. And I couldn't physically lift my legs out of the sand. They were so exhausted and so tired that the way I got out of the sand was like literally falling over on the sand saying a whole bunch of swear words and crying. Um, it didn't actually help me get out of the sand, but I think the emotional release helped me eventually get up. I kind, of, kind of feel sorry for her to be honest like I kind of do and I kind of don't. like I kind of feel sorry for her because like it must be so embarrassing to go through something like that but at the same time you know it you don't become this big overnight and I think because she's been a proponent of the health at every size movement and kind of denied the whole being obese is bad for you um, I kind of don't feel sorry for her because the reality is it is bad for you just as like being underweight is bad for you like any extreme is bad for you so yeah i feel sorry for her because like i can imagine it was pretty embarrassing um but at the same time like what did she expect that's also like the way that i'm looking at it but this happened a couple times where something simple like walking in the sand was so daunting and so overwhelming that I literally didn't know how I was going to get through it. And the idea of like making it to the top. And it got to the point where I finally did get out of the sand. I felt so overwhelmed and so embarrassed, like just so ashamed that like this is where I was after working out all this time, some freaking sand took me out. I'll be honest, I don't watch her, so I don't know what her workouts are like, but Granted, anything she does probably is a workout just because of the sheer size that she is. But um, what might be something that she considers a workout is probably not something that other people would consider a workout. Uh, especially people that are into regular working out. So I, like, I, like I said, I don't know what her workouts are like or how intense they are. And I'm sure they are intense for her. But just because something is intense for you. That doesn't necessarily mean you can keep it up with other people um, that are like more advanced, if that makes sense. And I, does that make sense? Like you don't know want to try to say? You know, it's like you can only, I know you should only compare yourself to you, but for example, like, like I was saying, I know I'm strong. I know I'm not that strong that I can hang with elite female powerlifters that are in my weight range. I would get fucking smashed. Like, I'm strong, but I'm not that strong. <laughs> I'm pretty strong. I'm stronger than most. But when you're talking about, for example, what I would have to do at my level, being an athlete already, competing with even better athletes or at the same standard, I would get fucking annihilated. So, like, I'm aware of, I, like, I am aware of that. I don't think of myself like, oh, I'm the strongest girl in the gym, so maybe I'm going to be the strongest girl in the world. No, 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 no. I'm far from that. All I wanted to do was keep up and I was pushing myself so hard and it, it sucked because I felt like they were seeing me and it probably looked like I was whining and complaining because I wasn't capable. But internally, I was pushing myself so hard that I was like physically, like everything hurt. I'm really curious to see like how challenging all of this was because she, like, I understand from her perspective, it would have been, like, uh, a mountain to climb, right? In terms of, like, uh, metaphorically speaking. Which I 100% believe. 
because she is a big person. I'm just curious to see what it really was like. Um, no, I'm not that curious, I'm going to find out, but I'm just wondering. Just to kind of get in a perspective because it's hard for like, it's hard. The way she makes a sound is like, she does make it sound like it was extremely difficult, which I think it probably really was for her. But I'm just, yeah, I'm just wondering for more able-bodied, for more able-bodied people, for fitter and healthier people, how challenging all of this would have been. And I just realized that like, I'm going to have to feel this way a lot before I get to the point where I can keep up. And keeping up is not a realistic expectation right now. She's gonna have to go. She's got a long way to go before she uh, gets to a point where she can just keep up with um, people that are healthier, that are a healthier weight than her. But is she, is she trying to lose weight? I don't actually know. Sorry guys, I'm going into this a bit blind. It happens sometimes. And, and beating myself up for not being able to keep up is exactly what kept me from trying. And I just felt like when I looked over that's an interesting mentality to have as well, isn't it? It's kind of like, I can't do something, so this is why I'm not going to try. I said this in the Amber video that I did, like, I just don't get, like, about ass patting, like, patting yourself on the back, not ass patting, but patting yourself on the back, like, I don't get that mentality of, I can't do something, so I'm not even going to try. It's within reason, obviously, but I think you just... You just work towards it until you reach your goal. It's no, and setbacks are gonna happen and that's fine. Nothing, no journey is ever perfect. But at the same time, if you really want, I just don't, I just don't get this whole, if you really want something, you work for it. You dedicate the time, you put the effort into it and you prioritize your life around it. And that's with anything like, anything whether that's getting a degree whether that's trying to get a promotion at work changing jobs it's like for example when it comes to jobs it's like people complain about like not having good jobs or not earning enough money but then they don't do anything to improve themselves to become more employable they don't learn new skills they are just stuck in the same job for years and years and years and years which is like fine if you want to do that um but if you want to go up and you want to become like a manager or you want to go move into a different position that pays more, you need to demonstrate that you are willing to make those changes, that you are willing to take courses, that you're willing to study, that you're willing to basically step outside of your comfort zone. And I think that's the issue with many people is that they're just not willing to do that. They're willing to complain about it because complaining is easy. But to actually sit down and go like, actually, reflect on yourself and go like okay what can i do to make myself more employable what can i do to stand out from the rest and sometimes it is things like sacrificing a few hours of your evening to get maybe more qualified or studying on the weekend or whatever whatever it may be if you're trying to start up a new business then do expect that you're probably not going to make a lot of profit from the beginning you may be lucky to even break it break even um, it's probably not going to be enormously successful, but you've got to just keep pushing and keep working on it. And then eventually, usually speaking, hard work always pays off. It has always done in my experience. And I don't know, maybe I've been lucky, but usually speaking, there's always something that you get from it, even if it's just a lesson to be learned. So yeah, like I just don't get the mentality of wanting something but not being willing to really work towards it. I just I just don't get it. It doesn't compute in my head. Over the week and I looked at all the things that we were doing, I was always just a little bit behind and it was so frustrating because I just I just want that win. I want to be where I was and I'm not there. Two and a half months of working out is not going to get me there. This is two and a half months of working out. It's not very long. It's, I find this sometimes um, with the Phoenix Rising, I often have to remind people, especially that are trying to build muscle, that it takes a long time, unfortunately. Even for juicy vitamins, it takes a long time. So getting any changes, especially if you're somebody that's naturally quite petite or that has been training for a long time, if you have visible changes in eight weeks, 
um, especially when it comes to building muscle and putting on some size, that's amazing. Because it's just harder, especially as, as for women, it takes a long time. So for working out for two months, what did, did she think she would like suddenly was like an athlete? You need to train a lot more than two months to become uh, a lot fitter and healthier. Of course, two months is better than nothing at all. But yeah, I don't think you're going to do an enormous amount of... I don't think you'll do an enormous amount of improving in terms of like improving your fitness and your health in two months especially if you're not losing weight with it if she would have maybe lost a lot of weight with it maybe but I which I don't know if she has maybe she has but if she hasn't lost any weight with it and she's just been exercising a bit every single day I think she is indeed a little bit delusional about how long it takes to become physically fitter it's taken a long time to become unfit it's going to take probably a long time to become fit two and a half three years is probably what I'm looking at. And I think the pain of that realization was just so heavy, like so frustrating because my, my mentality right now is I'm ready to go. I'm ready to start living the life that I kind of put on hold. And my body's not there. My body's not ready. And it's starting to feel a little bit like my body is, is, is a little bit of a prison, is a little bit of a place that I can imagine it's an enormous prison. I would like, I, I would wonder if people that are her size, if they could just like snap a finger and be in the body of like me, for example, how different they would feel. Because I think you get to a certain size and I just think you, the aches and the pains and the struggles that you have, I think you just start seeing them as normal when they're probably not for most people. But because it's happened gradually over time, I think you just kind of become blind to it or uh, numb to it. So yeah, I wonder if she could just be in somebody else's body that can just move around, that doesn't have aches and pains and issues, if they could understand the, for example, the things that I'm trying to say, the contrast of just carrying so much weight, how, how bad it is, how painful it is. Um, keeps me from experiencing the world in the way that I want to. And it's, um, it's challenging because I've never um, been at war with my body. I've always been pretty much at peace with it. But I do feel right now like I'm in a little bit of a war zone where I am pushing my body to do things that it is not accustomed to and not comfortable doing. That's good though. Growth happens outside your comfort zone. If you're always doing things when they're fun and they're easy and you feel inspired and motivated and you know you have the energy, that's not where change happens. Change happens when you do shit you don't you won't need to do when you don't feel like doing it. When it is uncomfortable, when you are tired, when you are when you are hungry. Those are the days, those are the sessions, those are the times that matter. That's character building. That is when you will start leveling up. But I remember getting to the trail and just being like, I hurt so much that there's no possible way that I can do even one stare. Like my body is shot. It is done. And what I didn't realize until I started trying to do the stairs is that my body is just as mad at me as I am at it. I don't know what these stairs are, but I can imagine just any set of stairs is uh, probably a challenge. And I realized that my body is going to fight me on things, especially new things, especially hard things. And the key to my success going forward is really going to be how well I can understand when those signals are valid signals, like I need to stop for my own safety, and how much of that is just my body being totally resistant to change because it's gotten comfortable living in this, you know, scenario. So, obviously in that scenario, she probably should have stopped for safety reasons. Because clearly she's very fatigued from the previous days of um, tracking and filming, etc. Sounds like she still did the trip though. I wonder if they had like a medic or something on hand. I've talked about this before in my like video where I talked about the house dream, but I really do feel like we get sold the story that it's like movement should be fun and easy and enjoyable. 
which it is for the most part but in order to progress and in order to keep improving you do need to do things that are challenging if you don't challenge yourself in a safe manner in a healthy manner in a responsible manner you're not going to grow so and it's not just and i think also when it comes down to movement and progress i think it should be quite holistic obviously i'm a big proponent of resistance training because it's just good for you it makes you feel good but i think a lot of people really underestimate the importance of cardio i've always done a lot of cardio cardio is good for your mental health it's good for your cardiovascular health and it's just it's just something that should be part of your routine i i personally do not understand how some people get like three four thousand steps a day even on a rest day even on my most laziest day that i can think of i get more than that and doesn't even, that's not me trying to like power level it just is that i just don't understand how somebody can be so sedentary like i literally don't understand how somebody can be literally even just me being at home doing nothing i get up i go for a pee i do some cleaning i do some this i do some that i i get steps in so it just it just boggles my mind when people get like three thousand steps a day and i just don't understand how how you can like how you can do that <laughs> to be so sedentary basically anyway i forgot what she's talking about but sometimes the things we want to do require us to put ourselves in situations that are unfun and uncomfortable and unenjoyable knowing that those lead to the things we want to do like it's going to be painful for me to do a lot of these hikes for a while maybe she should not do hikes and maybe she should just start walking larger distances on a flatter surface and maybe she should focus on improving her diet so she can lose a lot of weight because the more weight she loses the easier these hikes are going to be um, it's all well and good to practice hiking and to get better at hiking but if you're carrying like an extra three people on your body you're never good you're never going to get good at it so you can practice as much as you want really what boils out is you need to lose body fat in order to to get better at it that doesn't mean I should stop hiking until I magically somehow wake up with the physicality to be a hiker. She really does seem to just talk about basically getting better through exercise. She doesn't mention diet or losing weight at all. That's not going to happen. I'm going to have to go through all of the stress and the discomfort and the pain over and over and over again until one day I wake up and my body has adapted to support me. But that is so far away. Why, is she, why does she not mention diet and losing body fat? I'm really surprised, I'm really perplexed by this because clearly the whole reason the hike is hard is because of her size, obviously. So why, why not do something about the main issue, which is the excess body fat? So now the question is, is whether I keep pushing and whether I keep fighting for what I want, knowing that my body is going to struggle all the way through. And I think... While the reality check was painful, I made that choice. I made that choice to keep fighting for myself, keep advocating for myself, keep pushing myself. Yeah, that's all well and good. And I'm all for exercise and improving all of that, but the, the, the issue is the weight, really. So diet needs to, some calorie restriction needs to be implemented and probably improvements of what kind of foods are being eaten because you don't get to be that big and maintain that size by eating fucking chicken and broccoli technically you can but it's it's highly unlikely chicken and broccoli is not that nice to be binging on or to even eat in large amounts i let it get pretty bad and now i'm gonna have to go through some more bad to get it to get good that's about it <sighs> well at least i have one little victory i can put in this jar is that acknowledging this moment and being aware that this is where I'm at is part of the process. I do agree with her on that. You do need to start being realistic with yourself and realizing where you are and what needs to be done is, it is important. I'm just, I'm just concerned that she's not mentioned anything about her weight. She's just mentioned the exercise. So even though it's not a great feeling, I am acknowledging it and I'm allowing it to help me. And so that's, that's my little victory for the week. Um, yeah, I don't have any more else to say, guys. So with that, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Right. So, 
I don't really know what else to add to it. Like, like I said, I don't really follow her that much. The only concern that I have with all of this is that she doesn't mention weight loss. She doesn't mention dietary changes. And obviously that is the main thing that needs to happen. So, yeah. Uh, on that note, I'm gonna go into the mountain emoji if you've made it this far, because she went tracking. Comment, like, subscribe, dislike the video if you disliked it. Let me know down below why. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, cat. Look. I was like, what is that? It's a little violet grey. I said my bite really weird as well. Hey, little naughty girl. Little naughty girl. So we see if we can get some cat ASMR. No, no purring for you guys. Sorry. I tried to get some cat ASMR. There you go. Go get your food. But sorry. Anyway, bye. <laughs>